Hello and welcome to this quick start video of how to use InfluxDB V3 client library for Python. The library can be found at the given URL on GitHub. To install that, all you have to do is issue the following pip command. So let's dive right into it. Here we are in Visual Studio Code. I have in front of me a very straightforward Python program. It's a command line application that is going to connect to InfluxDB. It will write some data to it and it will query back the data from the bucket after it's written and it will print out the result. Now to do that, I have various libraries that I'm using. But first thing you wanna do is you wanna install essentially the InfluxDB v3 Python package. This is the name for it. So I'm using pip, so I just type pip install name of the package. I'm also using dot env package, python dash dot env is the name, and pandas. I'll explain these in a bit. So first, you wanna type pip install name of the packages in your Python project. I've already have them installed, so it says requirement already satisfied. And then let's look at it. So we have imported various libraries here. We installed dot env, which is a library that allows us to load environment variables. Now, to do that, you create a .env file in your project, in your root directory. So I have this file right here. And in this file, I'm storing some private sensitive information that I wanna keep locally. I don't wanna check into version control system. The information here is the host URL for InfluxDB, the API token, and the bucket name. All three of these can be found when you log into influxdata.com in your cloud account. You will, you will be able to see the host URL in the URL section of your browser, the API token, and the name of the bucket. You want to provide that inside .env file and then call this function that will load the file. Once the file is loaded, we just read these three properties in our variables. And then we finally instantiate the v3 client object. To instantiate it in the constructor, we pass in these three variables, the API token, the host URL, and the name of the bucket, which is also the name of the database. That creates the client object. Then we want to write some data to it. There are various ways to do that. In this demo, I'm writing the data by creating a point object. So I've created a point object here. Again, this is imported from our client library. And the point object is a data point. In my example, I'm collecting data about different insects in different parts of the world, and I'm storing them in a measurement, which is similar to a table called census. And in the census measurement, I have a tag, which is basically which gets indexed and it has key value pair information. So you provide it in this way, location, in my case, Brussels, and then the two actual values for that, which again, I provide it as field Ant, I found 14 ant, and I found 99 bees. I'm also passing one more field, which is going to be our current time. And I'm setting this up in a UTC format. So this is optional. You don't have to pass in time. Just for record's sake, I'm providing it here. But if you don't pass in time, every time your data is written to InfluxDB, it will add a timestamp. Finally, I'm going to call the write method client.write and pass it the point object. Now, there are various ways to write data to InfluxDB. You can write it in an async way or a sync way. Here, I'm writing synchronously, and I'll print after the data is written. And the next operation I want to do is I want to query now my bucket. So to query, you can query in different ways in our v3 client. We have support for SQL. So in my demo, we have a SQL query right here, which says, 
select the location tag, the ant, bees, and time values from our measurement named census. And I want to get this for the last seven days from today. And then I want to order it in ascending order. So that is our SQL statement, which is our basically our query variable. And we provide that when we call client.query, we provide that SQL query. The result would be stored in this result object. Now the result object in Python, it is essentially a pi arrow table. So underlying it uses a library called pi arrow, which uses a very data efficient format to store columnar data. And we capture that in this variable called result. Because it's very popular in Python world to use pandas, it makes working with data quite easy. So I'm converting that, which is optional, to pandas data table format or pandas data frame format here by calling on the result object to pandas. Lastly, I'm going to parse through this table and I'm going to grab time and I'm going to format the time so it's readable and then I'm going to print this whole data frame. So let's run that. I ran the program. It wrote data to InfluxDB and let's have a look. It, we just provided it a data point for Brussels 14 ants and 99 bees, and it just got written and queried back. So this is the result from our query, and we can see that it's very easy to use this library to write data and query back. Finally, I want to show you where the project lives. So InfluxDB v3 client library lives on GitHub. You can find it on GitHub and make sure it says 3.0, which is our v3 current client library. And when you install it, you can find the instructions here, how to install it. We just did that. And it tells you the things that it comes with, like we saw Pi Arrows and Pandas is optional that we use today. And then if you look at the readme, it has some other helpful information, code snippets, how do you initialize it, how do you write to it using various different methods? So I encourage you to look through this, read some of the samples that we have, and it will go in much more detail. You're welcome to also contribute back to it, or if you have any problem, you can open issues, or you can reach out to us in our community Slack or on our website. Finally, we appreciate if you star it. Thank you very much.